Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. And those are the starting lineups for this game between Cornerstone and Indiana Wesley. And I'm Thad Goff bringing you the broadcast today. We've got basketball doubleheader for you. Indiana Wesleyan taking on Cornerstone, and that will be followed by Indiana Tech taking on Spring Arbor later today. Game scheduled to start about probably 30 minutes after this one gets finished. Indiana Tech defeated Indiana Wesleyan yesterday. It's a final score of 85 to 83. And we are underway. Indiana Wesleyan wins the tip early on. They get the ball to the top of the key to Javon Buchanan. Buchanan on the drive against three defenders. Couldn't finish. And now back come the Eagles down the floor. Of course, Cornerstone is a WAC conference team. They'll be here again later in this season as part of their doubleheader against Indiana Tech. And on the inside, Corey Ainsworth gets it to go. Cornerstone was victorious yesterday over Spring Arbor, getting their record to 1-0 on the season. Spring Arbor will be here later today to take on Indiana Tech. This is Nathan Childress. Three ball by Noah Smith, and he knocks it down. 
Go and get our scoreboard fixed as Indiana Wesleyan now leads it 3-2. to two. Eli Steffen, one of the returning top scorers from Cornerstone from last year, a team that went 18-11. and 11. Ainsworth was the leading scorer as he dribbles it off his knee, and that one goes out. Clock will stop with 18.50 to go as Indiana Wesleyan takes over. Handoff back to Javon Buchanan. Buchanan will set the screen here. And they get it back out top to Childress. Smith on the drive against three defenders. Good dish to the corner. The three ball is good. Marcus Ankney knocks it down. Back-to-back -back threes for Indiana Wesleyan. And that one a result of good ball movement. Stefan just able to get it over top of Smith as Ainsworth gets a touch out of the top of the key, and he finds Stefan. That shot won't fall, and there for the rebound is number 22, Javon Buchanan. And Buchanan, with the feed late inside, gets it through that defense. On the drive comes Griffin Clewer, and he couldn't knock it down. Cornerstone was 18 and 11 a year ago. Again, they return a number of quality players, including Corey Ainsworth, Toby Wilcock, Eli Steffen, to name a few. That three, trying to curl in, and it does. Eli Steffen puts it home. And Cornerstone is within one. Six to five, they trail. Ankney. They worked that one around to Clewer. Clewer, the dish outside. That's Childress for three, and he knocks it down. It's a three-point parade for Indiana Wesleyan. Nathan Childress, by the way, a native of Zionsville, Indiana. That's down near the Indianapolis area. Steffens open for three, and he'll hit it. The three-point parade continues, and Cornerstone cuts it down to a one-point game. That Buchanan able to answer. It's the first deuce of the game for Indiana Wesleyan. Now this ball will go out of bounds. Indiana Wesleyan will take over. Clewer looks for a baseline drive. He's surrounded by Eagles. Did he step out? He did. Well, so often when you collapse on those dribble drives, it'll leave a shooter wide open, but that time the Wildcats ran out of real estate. Indiana Wesleyan coming off a season where they went 21-10 and 10 a year ago. They are a member of the Crossroads League, by the way. Cornerstone, they're a conference rival of Indiana Tech. Corner three, and that one would not fall. The shot taken by Luke Rolinski. As Wesleyan head coach Greg Tonegal is going to dig into his bench at the next stoppage in play. A little shot fake there by Ankney. He gives it up to Childress. Childress had it blocked. Corey Ainsworth with the rejection. That shot rolls off the rim, and the rebound eventually ripped away by Clewer. A good look from downtown for Clewer, but he couldn't connect. Looked like that was Joel Dersma, who came in with a late closeout for Cornerstone. Rolinson. Drew a foul, it looked like, against Indiana Wesleyan. Griffin Clewer called for the foul. That's Clewer's first foul. Looks like they got a new and improved scoreboard here at the Schaefer Center. The foul was non-shooting, by the way. 
Just the first team foul against Indiana Wesleyan. Cornerstone has yet to commit a foul. The inbound will come from the sideline as Jack Joldersma will put it in play. He finds Stefan on the inbound. Stefan in the corner, fires a three, got it! And that'll tie the game. 11 apiece, Stefan is feeling it today. That's three threes in the game for Eli Stefan. I believe he's got all the cornerstone threes so far. Feet inside goes to Cademan Bontrager, and he's fouled. Cademan Bontrager's from right here in Northeast Indiana. We're going to have a media timeout here, and while they take a timeout, we will take a break as well. You're watching Indiana Wesleyan basketball here on this broadcast brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. We're tied at 11, a good game so far between Cornerstone and Indiana Wesleyan. Coming out of a media timeout, and so far the star of the game has been Eli Steffen. He's hit three threes. That's where he's gotten all of his scoring from so far. It'll be two shots, meanwhile, for Cademan Bontrager. He's a native of Northeast Indiana, played his high school ball first at Lakewood Park. That's Lakewood Park Christian School over there in Auburn. Then he transferred to Leo. Both schools are very close to here in Fort Wayne. Indiana Wesleyan, of course, is down in Marion. That's about an hour south of Fort Wayne. Handoff goes here to Jack Joldersma. Wide open is Rollinson, and Rollinson couldn't hit, but it's put back by Joldersma. Joldersma, Johnny on the spot for the putback. And Joldersma's on the board for the first time. Two-point buckets have been at a premium so far, but Wesleyan has a chance for one here. They'll draw the foul. It was D.J. Moore who got fouled, a redshirt sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. It's the first foul, second foul, actually, against Cornerstone. <laughs> Looks like that one was called on Connor Dykema. Two for two from the line, and Wesleyan retakes the lead. The Wildcats had a close game with Indiana Tech last night here in this very stadium. Or this very gymnasium, rather. Indiana Tech won that one, 85-83. Stefan on the drive, contested. Putback won't go. Little slip pass. That one won't go. Bontrager came to close out. He didn't get the block, but he did affect the shot. And here comes Buchanan down the floor. Kicks to the corner. That three is good. Griffin Clewer. And the threes keep on falling, this time for the Wildcats. Wildcats, by the way, come into this game Ranked number nine in the NAIA as Joldersma feeds that one outside to Mason Brooks. Mason Brooks, one of the top returning scorers for Cornerstone. As that jumper is good, Jack Joldersma knocking it down. Joldersma has the last four points for Cornerstone. 2-3 zone here by the Eagles. Bontrager comes up to set the screen, then sets another screen for Jackson Gould. 
Backing in is Buchanan, and he puts it in on the baseline. That shot won't go. The Wildcats get the rebound as Clewer comes up with it. Feeds it to Gould. Gould the feed inside. Buchanan. Check that. That's Bontrager. And there's a takeaway right off the inbound. 22 to 15. That one gets loose and taken away by Jack Joldersma. I think it was Clewer who got the initial takeaway for the Wildcats, but the Eagles get it right back. Rollinson gives that one to Brooks. I think they were trying to catch Indiana Wesleyan in a switch there defensively. Wildcats are in a little man-to-man -man set here as Brooks connects for three. And that, I do believe, is Brooks' first bucket of the game, a three ball. It's been raining threes so far here at the Schaefer Center. The foul on the jump shot, that'll send Javon Buchanan to the free throw line. Eli Steffen gets called for that foul. Buchanan will go back to the free throw line. I believe he's two for two from the line so far. That percentage will go up. Second one's good as well. Indiana Wesleyan will pressure the inbound here. Looked like they were going to as Noah Smith came over with some pressure. Caden Bird feeds that one inside to Ainsworth. He looks to go to work on Bontrager and he draws the foul. Bontrager's first, just the second team foul so far against Indiana Wesleyan. Wildcats trying to bounce back after that loss to Indiana Tech last night. I believe they actually had a chance to win that game, but a missed three on the last possession closed it out as there's our first missed free throw of the game for either team. Corey Ainsworth at the line this time. Ainsworth, a senior center out of Wayland, Michigan. And we're going to have a discussion with the Iwu bench, it looks like. And we're going to have a timeout. I think the ball might be underinflated, if I'm not mistaken. Well, while they take a timeout, we'll also take one. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Well, they've got a new basketball, so uh, they're going to play on and have Corey Ainsworth go to the free throw line. The official was shaking the ball as he went over to the Indiana Wesleyan bench to explain to Greg Tonegal what was going on. And by the looks of things, I think the ball was underinflated, so they brought out a new one, and free throw is good. So Corey Ainsworth goes one for two from the free throw line. Smith draws a crowd, feeds it out. Seen some good ball movement so far by the Wildcats, and that will lead to an open three. Luke Imfeld from downtown. Imfeld, a redshirt freshman out of Danville, Kentucky, who I believe just came into the game for Indiana Wesleyan. And we're going to get a foul right along the sideline. Toby Wolcott gets ready to put it back in. And he finds Ainsworth. Off the hands of Wolcock and out of bounds. 
the Wildcats will take over up eight. This is their largest lead of the game so far. Infeld coming off that made three moments ago. He's able to find Bontrager at the top of the key as Smith draws a crowd, now leans into the shot. Bontrager's there, but he lost the rebound. Quick down the floor comes Trenton Boyk. And we're going to get a foul along the baseline against the Wildcats. Cayman Bontrager called for that foul, and we will have an inbound for Cornerstone. Trenton Boyk, the freshman out of Linden, Michigan, getting ready to put this one in play. Now right now, Greg Tonegal is trying to make sure he's got the right players in as he subs in a few guys. Javon Buchanan, one of the Wildcats who enters into the game. Von Traeger comes out. The ball is tipped off the inbound, but recovered by the Wildcats. By the Eagles, rather. They get it to Boyk. Brooks for three. That's off the side of the backboard, and it rims out. Smith. Defender falls down, so does Smith, and they're going to call a foul. I thought for a second that they might get Smith for a walk. Instead, it's called on Trenton Boyk. And into the game comes Jack Joldersma. They'll give Mason Brooks a breather. Looks like there's a wet spot there in the paint. As Ainsworth is going to help dry that up with a towel. I think that's the spot where Noah Smith went down. So. Cleaning that up before this ball is inbounded. An eight-point lead for the Wildcats. It is their largest of the game. Catch and shoot three, and Cleaver's three is off the mark, and a foul is called on Indiana Wesleyan. They get Javon Buchanan with a push from behind. Shot fake, and they find Joldersma. He lobs it into Ainsworth. All taken away. Griffin Clewer causes the turnover, and here comes Brown. Slips it off, and they get a basket as Buchanan finishes on the other end. And a timeout has been called by Cornerstone. A 10-point lead for Indiana Wesleyan with 10.07 to go. While they take a timeout, we will also take one on this broadcast of Indiana Wesleyan Basketball. goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Indiana Wesleyan has jumped out to a 10-point lead over Cornerstone. Indiana Wesleyan trying to bounce back from that loss at the hands of Indiana Tech last night. 85-83 was the final there. That was right here at the Schaefer Center. 10.07 on the clock, and it will be Cornerstone basketball. It looks like Iowa is going to bring some pressure. Get the ball in to Eli Steffen. 
excuse me, that's Trenton Boyke. It's been about three minutes since Cornerstone last had a basket as Boyke throws it high off the glass, it won't go. Marcus Ankney has the rebound. Cleaver through traffic, and a foul is called against Cornerstone. They lob that one in to Buchanan. Buchanan goes for the crossover, draws an extra defender and puts it in. Well, Javen Buchanan continues to get it done around the rim. He's got the last two made buckets for Indiana Wesleyan. Stefan hit three threes early on. He's been quiet since, and he missed that one. Buchanan the board. Here comes Brown down the floor. Excuse me, Smith, Noah Smith. Smith going baseline. Tries to swing it to the outside, and it's stolen. Toby Wolcock got the takeaway. Strike that, it was Caden Bird who got the take the takeaway. Number 20, not 22. Jodersma, one-on-one. A little bit too strong. But the rebound comes to Ainsworth, and he puts it home. And that's a much-needed bucket for Cornerstone. Ainsworth so far with five points. Of course, we are at the 8.33 mark. Childress uses the dribble drive, but could not finish. A little bit too strong on the layup. Corner three, Bird hits it. And a timeout is called. It was Indiana Wesleyan who took that timeout, so we'll take one as well here on this broadcast of Indiana Tech basketball. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. We have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. We are back. Indiana Wesleyan with the lead, but that lead has been trimmed down to seven. They had a 12-point lead not too long ago over Cornerstone. That's DJ Moore bringing it across the timeline for the Wildcats. The feed inside to Childress. Childress high off the glass. He scores. That's a bucket that the Wildcats needed. And for Childress, I believe that puts him up to seven points for the game. Stefan will hand that one off, and they work it around to Jack Joldersma. Eli Stefan's been rather quiet since he hit those three early triples, but he gets a touch here and drives into the paint, makes the spin move, and gets it to fall. Cornerstone a winner last night over Spring Arbor. In last night's games, it was basically Michigan versus Michigan and Indiana versus Indiana. High lob and the jam. Cademan Bontrager, the alley-oop.
The redshirt freshman from right here in Fort Wayne. Connecting on the jam job. They drive to the basket. Stephen slips it off, and the basket's good. It's Joldersma who puts it home. Back and forth they go here at the Schaefer Center. Von Trigger fakes the pass. Clewer, the step back jumper. It's good. And check that, that's Marcus Ankney. Wildcats and the Eagles trading baskets right now. Stefan down the baseline, feeds to the corner. That three is good. Caden Bird knocking it down. Cornerstone sets up their 2-3 zone, and the Wildcats find Bontrager. They slip it outside to Bontrager. Bontrager able to hit the hook shot. Bontrager making an impact off the bench here for the Wildcats. He's up to six points so far. Played for a Leo team back in 2022 that I believe won their conference. That basket is good. Joldersma, check that. Stefan able to knock it down. Childress gets around the screen from Bontrager. Drives to the basket, high off the glass, and he scores. Well, Indiana Wesleyan seems to have an answer for every cornerstone bucket, but you could say that the reverse seems to be true. Cornerstone has answered all of Indiana Wesleyan's buckets since the last time out. Joldersma for three. No good. Battle for the rebound. Wildcats have it. Here comes Ankney trying to beat the pack. Late feed to Childress, and Childress puts it in. And we've got a whistle. Clock will stop with 4.51. Did not see a signal, but subs are going to come into the game. Noah Smith comes in, and Cornerstone gets ready to inbound. And is Indiana Wesleyan going to continue to bring in subs? Stefan gets it. Shoulders Ma off the fake. He finds Stefan. Stefan, step back jumper, short. And that is going to stay in bounds as Clewer is able to grab it. It looked like it would have gone off of Cornerstone, but Clewer decides to go grab it and set up a possession. Kick to the corner, Ankney fires a three, it's good. And now Indiana Wesleyan has their largest lead of the game, a 13 point lead as Marcus Ankney connects from the corner. They're gonna call that a foul. Childress inadvertently knocks Stefan down. Greg Tonegal, for a moment, I think was pleading his case with the referee, but there's not going to be a change in the call as Toby Wilcock gets set to put this one in play. Brooks off the inbound, gets it back to Wilcock. They go inside, and a foul is called on the shot. They called it on Jackson Gould, and he'll go to the free throw line. Check that he does not go to the free throw line. It's Luke Rawlinson at the line. 3.54 to go in the first half here between Indiana Wesleyan and Cornerstone. And that one is good. We've only had one missed free throw in the game all day. Thank you. 
Rollinson goes two for two. Clewer against the 2-3 zone, feeds it over to Buchanan. Buchanan able to find some help as Gould lets it fly. Offensive rebound, Noah Smith. He finds Bontrager against two defenders. No trouble at all as Bontrager puts it home. Contested shot is good. Toby Woolcock. Well, they called Luke Rawlinson, actually, for that bucket. Nearly taken away. It's out of bounds. They're going to say it touched Cornerstone last. Smith. Looking to put it in, he's going to call a timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll stay with you for this one and show you one of our replays. Cademan Bontrager has had a really nice first half ever since he came into the game. He's going to get a chance here off a missed three. Credit Noah Smith as he's able to get that offensive board and feed Bontrager on the interior. Bontrager, I've got him for eight points so far in this game. It will be Wildcats ball off the inbound coming out of the timeout. Gould kicks to the corner. Shot clock down to nine, and the basket goes. Cademan Bontrager puts it home. Foul is called. And that's going to be on Cademan Bontrager. Beg your pardon, we've got 2.25 left to go here in this first half. At the line is Luke Rawlinson. And Rawlinson is able to connect on the first free throw. Indiana Wesleyan's up to eight team fouls. Cornerstone's committed just five so far. He goes two for two. Corner three, Ankney. He's hit one already, not that time. Childress had the shot blocked, and Cornerstone comes away with it. Stefan. A catch and shoot for Toby Woolcock. Couldn't hit the three. Battle for the ball on the deck. And it's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow will favor Cornerstone. Ainsworth backing down. Shot clock at five. Ainsworth could not connect. And it's grabbed by Buchanan on the rebound. Here come the Wildcats.
infield. Swings it up to the top of the key. Bontrager has it taken away, and here come the Eagles. That's a quick three that does not go for Caden Bird. Smith has it for Indiana Wesleyan. He finds Childress. Childress gives that one back to Smith. Smith looks to go baseline, and then that goes off of Cornerstone and then lands out of bounds. Caden Bird into the game. It was actually Luke Rawlinson who took that last three for Cornerstone. Clock has not started. Clock was set at a minute. The official's going to have him reset the clock to a full minute. Right now it's showing 59.4. Actually taking it down to 56 seconds. Seven on the shot clock. As Imfield gets it outside to Childress. Defender falls down. That's going to be an offensive foul. The shot will not count. It looked like Childress did commit an offensive foul there. The official saw it and looked like a pretty easy call. 46.2 seconds left. Shot clock is still a factor. Shot clock, by the way, at the NAIA level is 30 seconds. Much like it is nowadays at the NCAA level. Brooks for three, won't fall. And it is Bontrager who gets the board. And now the Wildcats can't quite hold for the last shot. There's only about a Second and a half difference between shot clock and game clock. Shot clock's down to 10. Wesleyan can take this down as far as they want to with this double digit lead, and they won't get the jumper there. Putback doesn't fall either. Clock runs out. Indiana Wesleyan does lead 50 to 39 as we go to halftime. Wildcats ahead of the Eagles as we go to halftime. You're watching this broadcast of Indiana Wesleyan basketball. It's brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. 
Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech Enrollment Centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're gonna have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're gonna have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're gonna to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2. And he's the one of the professors that teaches it. And he just really was a very kind and helpful helpful guy and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in a, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips and spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And but it wasn't just learning about that. It was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with 
other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. What's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. We are at halftime here at the Schaefer Center. Indiana Wesleyan with a 50 to 39 lead over Cornerstone. Of course, our next game is between Indiana Tech and Spring Arbor. Right now, Spring Arbor is out on the court doing their warm-ups. It looks like Indiana Tech is just about done with their warm-ups here at halftime. Meanwhile, we've got some live stats to give you. For Cornerstone, Eli Steffen is their leading scorer with 13 points. Luke Rawlinson has six, as does Caden Bird and Jack Joldersma. Corey Ainsworth with five points so far. Mason Brooks with three so far in the game. On the Indiana Wesleyan side, their leading scorer is Javen Buchanan. He's got, got him for 10 points in the game so far. Marcus Ankney with eight. Nathan Childress with nine. Cademan Bontrager with 12. Griffin Clewer has three, as does Noah Smith. DJ Moore has two. Luke Imfeld has a three off the bench. Those are the scorers so far for the game. We're back in just a matter of moments here on this broadcast of Indiana Tech basketball. It's brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, 
home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Indiana Wesleyan leads Cornerstone. This is part of the WAC Conference Crossroads League Challenge taking place here at the Schaefer Center. Indiana Tech will take on Spring Arbor next. They took on Indiana Wesleyan last night, and Cornerstone took on Spring Arbor. So today the roles are reversed. Of course, Cornerstone will play Indiana Tech later this year as part of the WAC Conference slate. But Indiana Tech getting a couple matchups with the Crossroads League as they take on Indiana Wesleyan last night and Spring Arbor tonight. We're back in just a matter of moments here on this broadcast of Warrior Basketball. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. When this game, Indiana Wesleyan has led by as many as 13 points. For a little while there in the first half, it seemed like Cornerstone was fighting back into the game. They had gotten it down as close as six. But Indiana Wesleyan fought back and did take that 13-point lead after that run by Cornerstone. Cornerstone has not led really at any point in the ballgame. They've tied it, they've come within one, but I don't believe they've led at any point in the game. Two teams will switch sides here, and it will be Indiana Wesleyan ball to start the second half. Clewer feeds that one to Childress. Childress has been a big force for the Wildcats on the inside tonight. He's got 10 points for the game. And driving to the basket is Clewer to get the bucket. The Wildcats are back up to that 13-point lead that they enjoyed earlier. But again, Cornerstone was able to answer. And one guy who's gone quiet lately is Eli Steffen, although he did finish the first half with 13 points. He had three early threes. They'll get it to him on the corner, and Steffen couldn't hit that one. The 
lob to the corner. That's Childers from downtown, and he buries a three. That'll give the Wildcats their largest lead of the game. Childers up to 12 points for the game. It was actually Buchanan who had 10 points at the end of the first half. They try to get it to Ainsworth, and Ainsworth just makes the catch and then wisely throws it off at Childress to preserve the possession for Spring Arbor. But the shot clock's down to six, excuse me, for Cornerstone. They're from the same state as Spring Arbor, but not the same conference. Ainsworth hands that one off. Stefan. Shot clock winding down. Stefan just gets it off. Sorry about that, folks. Had a little cough coming on there. I thought I was about to lose my voice for a second. Three ball comes up short. Goes Buchanan. And the Eagles will let it go out. Ainsworth will hand that one off. That shot won't go. Childress has the board. Noah Brown, he's quick with the basketball, and he gets down the floor, tries to feed it through traffic. And Cornerstone gets a takeaway. Stefan, a little strong off the glass, but the putback is good by Jack Joldersma. A much-needed basket for the Eagles. They get their first of the second half. Joldersma has eight points for the game. Childress, baseline drive, taken away. Did he step out? Or did Childress step out? We've got a foul, it looks like, against Cornerstone. It's on Jack Joldersma. It's a first-team foul this half against Cornerstone. First-team foul for either team. Clewer fakes the catch and shoot and then gets that one to Childress. Brown fakes, dishes outside. Shot clock down to eight. Oh, that looked like a foul. Greg Tonigal wants one, but it's not called. Wilcock for three. It's poked away from behind by Joldersma. Ainsworth one-on-one, -on -one. now one-on-two, and Ainsworth all oh, couldn't put it in. He had the angle. Putback won't go either. And the rebound comes out to Noah Smith. Long pass to Clewer across the court. Clewer just over the outstretched arm of Ainsworth, and he scores. Griffin Clewer able to put it home. Second bucket this half for Clewer. Stefan with the blow by. Stefan up to 15 points for the game. He had three early threes. Bontrager the offensive board, but a foul is called. Luke Rawlinson called for the foul. And Bontrager goes to the line to shoot a pair of free throws. Ref wanted to dry off the basketball there. That's the second team foul this half against Cornerstone. Bontrager spent his high school career at Lakewood Park Christian Academy and also at Leo High School, both of those schools here in northeast Indiana. Lakewood Park is in Auburn. It's about half an hour north of Fort Wayne. And of course, Leo is in East Allen County. At least it's part of the East Allen County Schools District. 
It's not too far from Fort Wayne, just outside the city. Joldersma goes baseline, has two defenders on him. The three ball comes up short, and D.J. Moore has the rebound. Clewer has two defenders fronting him, trying to get it to Bontrager, and it gets away. Rollinson down the floor, gets into the paint. Right over top the defender, and Rollinson scores. Bontrager at the top of the key, hands that one to Ankney, and Ankney's shot won't go. Will crossover dribble there, Rollinson. The step back three wouldn't fall. That 15 point lead that Wesleyan had moments ago was their largest of the game. They get a takeaway. Bontrager caused it. Clewer came up with a steal. Buchanan looking for help. He'll back it down to the baseline. Draws an extra defender. There's Bontrager with a shot clock at four. He flips it out. Out to Clewer. Down to one. They got to get it off and they're not going to. Shot clock violation. And we're going to have a media timeout. So we will take a quick pause here on this broadcast of Indiana Tech basketball. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Indiana Wesleyan leading 58-45 in this Crossroads League WAC Conference Challenge. Or should I say WAC Crossroads Challenge. Taking place here at the Schaefer Center. Last night, Indiana Wesleyan played Indiana Tech. It was the Warriors who won that one by two. Cornerstone defeated Spring Arbor. So you had the matchups of teams from the state of Michigan and also the matchups of teams from the state of Indiana. Today it's Indiana versus Michigan. Cornerstone's out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Indiana Wesleyan's out of Marion, Indiana. And of course, Indiana Tech, who's from right here in Fort Wayne, will be taking on Spring Arbor, who's from Spring Arbor, Michigan. They feed that one over to Connor Dykema. Here's Stefan on the drive. Almost had it taken away. He leans in and hits the shot with 10 on the timer. Well, Eli Steffen not hitting threes like he was earlier in the game, but still coming up with some big shots for the Eagles. They slip that one off to Ankney and a turnover. Here's Brooks. He stops and hands that one to Rollinson. Rollinson gets into the paint. He can make it a single-digit game here, but the shot doesn't go. And now here comes Buchanan down the floor, a little sidestep, and it's a blocking foul. Beg your pardon, folks. We'll fix our clock here. Bontrager was the one who drew the Excuse me, Buchanan was the one who drew the foul. 
I heard the announcement and it threw me off there, but that definitely was Buchanan who drew the foul. Did he get the bucket there? Thought he missed the shot, but either way, that goes goes as a four three point play, and Stefan on the drive through traffic, and he's fouled. They get DJ Moore for that foul. This is the first team foul this half against Indiana Wesleyan. Loose ball, it was blocked. Javon Buchanan with the rejection. Step back three, that's Buchanan, and he hits it. Buchanan blocks a shot and then hits a three. Cannon with 13 points for the game. Here's Stefan. A couple players fall down. Stefan's three doesn't go. No one was called for a foul there. Now Rollinson draws the foul. The basket will count. They call it on Luke Infeld. So a chance at a three-point play for Rollinson. And Rollinson able to hit the free throw. We've had two three-point plays this half, one for Indiana Wesleyan and one for Cornerstone as Ankney gives that one off to Imfeld. Imfeld, it's a little help side defense. Moore has the look from downtown and connects. D.J. Moore, quiet most of this game, able to knock down a three. Rollinson goes down the baseline, finds some open space and scores. Buchanan will give that one to Ankney. Well, Buchanan got tangled up there with Brooks, but Buchanan was wide open, and he gets fouled very late. Got to adjust our scoreboard here, 67-52. So Buchanan will go to the free throw line, 67-52 the score. Each team has missed just one free throw so far today. Buchanan able to sink the first free throw. Second one no good. Offensive board though. Griffin Clewer creates an extra possession and here's Buchanan. Leaves it up for Bontrager, what a pass. Buchanan threw it over his shoulder to Bontrager, and now we're going to get a foul on Cornerstone. Offensive foul against the Eagles, and they call it on Rawlinson. I thought they said 33. The announcement was Mason Brooks. I thought the signal was 33. Mason Brooks is number 34. Yeah, there we go, Luke Rawlinson. Call for the foul, and timeout taken by Cornerstone. Well, they take a timeout, we'll also take one. Indiana Wesleyan leads it 70-52 to at the WAC Crossroads League Classic. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. 
It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Indiana Wesleyan enjoying their largest lead of the game. They're up 18 with 11.24 left to play here in the first game of this Saturday edition of the WAC Crossroads League Challenge. 11.24 left to play. It will be Indiana Wesleyan ball after the offensive foul just moments ago. This is Jackson Gould coming across the timeline. He hands to Buchanan. Bontrager sets the screen. Leaning in is DJ Moore. Could not connect, but he gets his own board and draws the foul. DJ Moore, the redshirt sophomore from Columbus, Ohio, getting to the free throw line. Luke Rawlinson called for the foul. That's his third for the game. Six-team foul against Cornerstone this half. The first half was rather close, but the second half, Indiana Wesleyan's pulled away a little more. He will go one for two on that trip. Feed to the baseline, that's Wolcock. He goes outside to Steffen. That's taken away. Jackson Gould has it. And the jam to Bontrager in transition. He caps off the alley-oop. <laughs> 16 for Bontrager, and he's from right here in Northeast Indiana as we get a foul called against the Wildcats. That's just the third team foul against the Wildcats this half. It's more second for the game. And to Steffen. Steffen, the drive. Hits it with the left hand. Stefan trying to get his team back in this game. He's up to 19 points. As Cleaver feeds that one over. Driving to the basket is DJ Moore, and he puts it home. Jack Joldersma. Dish to the baseline. They find Stefan on the block. Stefan puts it in. Bontrager sets the screen for Buchanan. Buchanan lets it fly in and out. And that's knocked out by, I thought by Cornerstone. They're going to say off of Wesleyan. And a... Timeout appears to have been called. They said full timeout. At least I thought they did. Now they're bringing everybody back out on the court. And it will be cornerstone ball as they trail by 19 points. Joldersma along the block, fakes the pass, and then a foul called shortly after the pass. They slip it inside, Wolcox able to score.
Toby Wolcock on the board for the first time. Here's Buchanan. Down the paint, couldn't connect. Ainsworth has the board. Ainsworth, leading scorer from last season for Cornerstone, has been rather quiet tonight. Just five points so far as Stefan flips it in off the glass. And don't look now, but that's six straight points for Cornerstone. They were down by as many as 21 points in this game. They're trying to fight their way back into it. Slip inside to Childress. Childress off the side of the backboard. And again, Cornerstone with a chance to cut into this deficit. Looks like the Wildcats initially went with a 2-3 zone. Here's Ainsworth. Stefan sets the screen for him. Stefan fakes the three. He'll lob it inside to Ainsworth. Ainsworth right at the bucket, puts it home. And that's going to prompt a timeout from Wesleyan head coach Greg Tonegal. Well, Cornerstone's on the comeback trail. They've scored the last eight points after being down by 21. And now Tonegal trying to get his team back together as we take a break here on this broadcast of Warrior Basketball. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Eight oh six to go here in this second quarter, second half rather, as Indiana Wesleyan has a thirteen point lead, but Cornerstone has scored the last eight points. That prompted Greg Tonegal to call a timeout as the Wildcats get the ball across the timeline. Cornerstone in the two three zone. They've used this a lot throughout the game. Cleaver goes for the fake. He'll lob it inside to Childress. Childress with the jump hook, got it. Indiana Wesleyan able to finally answer back as Childress is now up to 16 points. A lot of big time scorers tonight for Indiana Wesleyan. Childress was 16, Cadron Cayman Bontrager was 16. That's an offensive foul meanwhile. Check that, Childress has 12. Childress has 14, and so does Buchanan. Cadman Bontrager has 16. Childress finds Gould, throws that off the foot. of Toby Woolcock, and it will be Wesleyan basketball. The dish inside, extra pass, Bontrager, foul is called. I think they called a blocking foul, but right now, got a cornerstone player down. They get him up. It is Luke Rawlinson who was down, and I think he's the one who's going to be called for the foul. Although right now they're showing that Ainsworth was called for the foul. It's the eighth team foul against Cornerstone. And now they do call it on Rawlinson. That's Rawlinson's fourth. One more and he would foul out of the game. Bontrager, 
Sean Schrager at the free throw line. And he's able to connect. Bontrager goes two for two. Eighteen points for Cademan Bontrager. That ball's almost taken away. Noah Smith trying to stay with Stefan. Stefan zips it inside. Ainsworth had it knocked away, but a foul is called. Apparently, Jackson Gould got his hand in there and knocked him on the arm. The fifth team foul against Indiana Wesleyan. Taken away from behind. That's Gould. Gould, the lob pass. It's good. Griffin Clewer puts it home. The ball's knocked out of bounds by Indiana Wesleyan. But they go now up by 19. A little backdoor cut along the baseline and a foul called. Looked like Bontrager got in there and made the contact. Instead, they're going to call it on Gould. They'll send Caden Bird to the free throw line. Freshman out of Caledonia, Michigan. First free throw is good. Cornerstone was on a comeback trail not too long ago. They had fallen behind by 21, but then scored six straight points. Bird hoping that he can get another run started. Just 6.28 left to go in regulation. A little full court pressure here by Cornerstone. Smith dishes it outside. Here's Childress on the drive, trying to lob it to Bontrager. His lob's a little too high. Brooks with a feed to the corner. That three is good. Caden Bird from downtown. And now it's a 14-point game. Cornerstone not out of it yet. They set up their 2-3 zone. Here's Gould on the baseline drive. His floater won't go. Swatted out by Bontrager, and Bird has it. Woolcock down the floor, a little Euro step, and he puts it home. Down to a 12-point game. The closest it's been this second half was 11 points, and that was at the start of the second half. Woolcock's been rather quiet, but he gets it down to 12. That ball's tipped and recovered by Clewer. Brown, right through the zone, draws the foul. They got Connor Dykema for the foul. They will send Noah Smith to the charity stripe. Some huge free throws coming up here for Smith. He's been rather quiet on the scoreboard, but he hits that first one. Missed free throws have been at a premium. We do have one change to make here. Indiana Wesleyan has actually three timeouts remaining, not four. They used one earlier. Smith goes two for two.
Stephan to the corner for Brooks. Brooks lets it fly. His three is good. Mason Brooks hit just one three up until that one. And Cornerstone still fighting back. They're down 11. They had eight straight points after Indiana Wesleyan went up 21 earlier in this half. Does Wesleyan have an answer here? They dish that one outside to Buchanan. Will slip pass to Bontrager on the inside. His shot's a little bit too strong. But an offensive board and a new shot clock. Griffin Clewer making that happen. Bontrager sets the screen for Smith. Smith leans in and scores with 10 on the timer. Well, Noah Smith trying to help play the closer role as we've now got four minutes to go. Stefan the drive, puts it up high, no good, and a foul called as Rawlinson comes down with the board. Marcus Ankney called for the foul. That's the seventh team foul against Indiana Wesleyan as Eli Stephan had to tie his shoe there. Luke Rawlinson at the free throw line. I've got Rawlinson for eight points, make it nine after that free throw. And a timeout, timeout taken by Indiana Wesleyan. They've got two remaining. It's a full timeout, we'll take one right along with them. goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. One more free throw for Luke Rawlinson, and he's able to connect. A little 2-1-2 two, two press. 2-2-1 two, two, press, perhaps, there by Cornerstone. As they get it to Smith, Smith will feed it back outside. Buchanan backs away from the paint. Catch and shoot three. Clewer knocks it down. For Clewer, that puts him up to 12 points, and we've got a foul called against the Wildcats. They called it on Marcus Ankney. That's the eighth team foul. This will be one and one for a cornerstone. It's Luke Rawlinson who's going to the free throw line. His first one goes. Cornerstone fighting back even after they were down 21 points. In fact, I think Wesleyan had him down 21 on two different occasions. That's Ankney's third foul, by the way. Second one rims out. Battle for the rebound. It's Bontrager who comes down with it. Bontrager, who's had such a big game scoring the ball, comes up with a huge rebound there, and he feeds Noah Smith. Smith into the paint. Hits the floater. Well, Noah Smith has been playing the closer role for this game. We're down inside three minutes. Smith's come up with some big late buckets here in this game. That one almost went to no man's land. Brooks with a contested three. It's short. Clewer is all alone for the rebound. Smith. Uses the paint, has it blocked. 
kept alive by the Eagles. Rawlinson comes across the timeline. Tries to get through traffic. He does, but it's blocked by Buchanan. But the putback is good. Rawlinson staying with it. Quick down the floor, Buchanan, high, no good. Rollinson with a long three, it's good. And all of a sudden, we got a 10-point game. And has Indiana Wesleyan called another timeout? Nope, it's Cornerstone who calls this one. That leaves them with three timeouts remaining. But what a huge shot that was, and we will show it to you again. Rawlinson's made a couple of big-time plays in this one. This was a long three that he just connected on. That's actually the bucket he made on the previous possession. Rawlinson got it down to a 13-point game with that bucket. And with that and the three he made moments ago, Cornerstone is on the comeback trail. One fifty-two left to go. It will be Indiana Tech ball as they try to hold on for their first win of the season. Indiana, I said Indiana Tech. It's actually Indiana Wesleyan. I think that's the first time I've made that mistake in this game. But Indiana Wesleyan came into this game ranked number nine in the country. Right now they're trying to hold on against the feisty and experienced Cornerstone group. This Cornerstone team could present a challenge when they come back here in the regular season to face Indiana Tech. They get the ball to Childress, and Childress is able to put it in. Well, the big men for Indiana Wesleyan have come up big in this game. That's 16 points for Nathan Childress. Blocked late by Bontrager. Check that Buchanan with the block. Well, Buchanan and Bontrager have both played a big role in this one, especially when it comes to scoring the basketball. Here's Marcus Ankney. He'll back it out. Shot clock down to 13, although the shot clock's really a non-factor, you might say, as we're down inside a minute. Little reverse shot. That doesn't go. The tip-in does. That's Childress again. Again, the big man for Iwu have come up big several times. Rawlinson, another deep three. But right now, there's just an eight-second differential between shot clock and game clock, and a foul is called, and that's basically what you have to do if you're cornerstone. Indiana Wesleyan is in the double bonus. College basketball still has the one and one, but starting this year, high school ball, at least in the state of Indiana, will not have the one and one. Every foul in the bonus, at least starting with the seventh team foul each half, will lead to double double free throws, excuse me, double digit free throws. So basically it'll be double bonus once you get to the bonus. Noah Smith goes one for two. Smith will finish this game with ten points. Stefan on the drive. Blocking foul is the call. Nathan Childress gets called for the foul. That's his third. Childress, Bontrager, both with 18 points. We've got Javen Buchanan for 14. We will, of course, award our Parkview Sports Medicine Player of the Game when this one is all said and done, and then we will await the start of Indiana Tech versus Spring Arbor. Indiana Tech trying to make it two straight wins against the Crossroads League. They defeated Indiana Wesleyan last night. By the looks of things, these teams will both be 1-1. One and one. 
for their records when this game's all said and done as Eli Steffen goes to the stripe. Could not connect on that one. There you see Spring Arbor standing outside the visiting locker room. They'll take the court in a matter of moments. Indiana Tech's players, they're over here on the left side of the court. 0 for 2 goes Steffen. And a foul right off the inbound, or off the rebound, it looks like. That should send Griffin Clewer to the line. Well, it's double bonus all the way through for Indiana Wesleyan. Next Wesleyan foul, though, would put Cornerstone at the line for double bonus. And Clewer gets him a step closer to closing out this game. He goes two for two on that trip. They work the ball outside to Rawlinson, and Rawlinson's three does not go. Buchanan has the rebound. Wildcats will get it across the timeline, and that's just about all they have to do. Indiana Wesleyan is your winner in game number one of our doubleheader. And got the announcement. That's 500 career wins for Greg Tonegal, the head coach at Indiana Wesleyan. He leads the Wildcats to a 97-83 win over Cornerstone. Well, our Parkview Sports Medicine player of the game, it's going to be three players. Nathan Childress, Cademan Bontrager, and Javon Buchanan. They all come up big today in the win for Wesleyan. They are your Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game. Bontrager and Childress with 18 points apiece, 14 for Buchanan. That'll do it for our first game of this doubleheader of the WAC Crossroads League Classic. We're back for game number two, Indiana Tech versus Spring Arbor. In just a little bit here on this broadcast of Warrior Basketball brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good luck, Tammy. See you, David. Things happen. How do you make the unexpected happen? Take the next step with an online degree from Indiana Tech. Start with a visit to one of our two new Chicago area enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. You'll discover a wide range of affordable undergraduate and graduate degrees with flexible class schedules designed to fit your lifestyle and help you earn a degree sooner than you'd expect. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior.